Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about all the books that I read in the month of September. And I must say, it was a great month of reading. I have so many good books to recommend you guys. So let's get right into the video. The very first book I read this month you guys all know this book, I'm pretty sure. It's called A Court of Thorns and Roses by none other than Sarah J. Maas. And she is a queen, right? We know this, we know this. However, I rated this book three stars. And let me tell you why. Before you come for me, before you come for me, let me tell you why. I love, like, well, let me take a step back. 80% of this book, I was hooked. From the very first chapter, I was intrigued. I was like, oh my God, this is so good. Fantasy. It's basically about this huntress named Farah. She goes off into the woods. She kills this wolf. This wolf, turns out, was a fairy. And so then someone from the fairy land comes to Farah's cottage, drags her back to his land for retribution. He was like, you kill one of mine. And so now I'm either going to kill you or you get to come with and live with me on my land. Already that sounds weird. In my opinion, Opinion. So then she gets dragged to his land and now that she's there she finds out that like there's this like shadowy dark thing Lurking in the scenes and like causing ruckus in the fairy land by the end of the book It's basically like Farrah's sole mission to stop the dark shadowy thing from taking over Tamlin world and dooming him and the whole fairy land forever That's basically in a nutshell what the first book was about. I keep saying Tamlin I forgot to mention that Tamlin was the beast that dragged her from her cottage to the fairy land She killed that wolf and then a beast showed up and then the beast was Tamlin. We find out that in the synopsis it says that he's not a beast all the time. So anyway, that was cool. It was very much like whimsical in the beginning where like she's just hunting for like food. She kills this thing and then before you know it, like her whole life like blew up. That part I was really intrigued with and then I was flipping out. I was like, what's gonna happen? Like why did he capture her? Like what's gonna happen when she's there? But then guys, the reason why I gave the book three stars is because the ending. I did not like the way it ended literally at all. Like I was like, it's giving misogynistic views. It's giving no. It, it just was a no for me. And like this series is not even a short series. Like it's pretty long and the books get thicker. And so I'm like, do I really want to invest into this whole series? I mean, maybe later down the road, maybe I'll pick it back up again. After reading that book, I needed a sort of like palate cleanser. So then I started reading this book. You guys have probably heard of this book already. It's called Love Theoretically. If you watch my 24 hour reading vlog, you've seen me talk about these books in more detail. This is not new information. I gave this book five stars. I absolutely love this book. It was such a good palette cleanser from the Court of Thorns and Roses, but also it's just a good book on its own. You know what I mean? I loved it. This book basically is like a STEM romance novel type of thing. It's about this girl named, what's her name? For her name, Elsie. Elsie is a theoretical scientist. She also has a double life because by day she's like an adjunct professor, but then by night she goes off and she does this like fake dating thing to make extra money to supplement her non-existent paycheck as an adjunct professor. She ends up dating this guy named Greg, fake dating this guy named Greg, but then Greg's brother turns out to be an experimental scientist. And so they're in the same science world. Anyway, Elsie hates being an adjunct professor, so she wants to move up and she wants to go do something else. So then a position opens up at MIT for like a theoretical scientist or whatever. She applies. Guess who is on the interviewing panel? None other than Jack Smith. Who's Jack Smith? Jack Smith is her fake date's brother. Whenever she goes on these fake dates, she like lies about, not lie, but she kind of like doesn't really reveal who she really is, you know? Instead of saying, I'm an adjunct professor, she's like, I'm a librarian. So imagine Jack Smith when this girl who is your brother's girlfriend who says she's a librarian shows up for an MIT interview. You're thinking like, what? What are you doing here? Aren't you a librarian? The whole time, like, is he going to like sabotage her for this interview? There are some crazy 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 spicy scenes in this book i mean just look at the cover like i was like i cannot leave this book lying around anywhere you know because that's like <laughs> it like, looks really weird you know but anyway there are some very spicy scenes i felt super uncomfortable reading it sometimes and i was like okay at one point one spicy scene had me like okay i don't like this you know i don't really read many romance novels and when i do when i read something like that i'm like is this normal or like is this just this author you know what i'm saying but it wasn't enough for me to like hate it because i was saying get this book five stars but it was enough for me to be like mm, if you don't like spicy scenes, you might not want to get this one. It's still good. The underlying message of like the academic world and like interviewing for jobs and, and just the romance that stems from this relationship is just so incredible. Like the writing, I felt like I was watching a movie the whole time. Anyway, all that is to say is like I really, 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 really enjoyed this book. Really, it's like six stars, but it's not for everybody. 
after I read that book, then guys, I started reading Carvo by Stephanie Garber. I love her. I love her writing. I was very intrigued the whole time. I ended up giving this book four stars if i remember correctly i gave it four stars but now looking back i might want to up my rating to like 4.25 stars something very specific like that because majority of this book i was like hooked i was like <gasps> let me tell you let me take a step back and tell you what this book is even about <laughs> there are two sisters scarlet and tella and they both have this dream or well, mostly scarlet has this dream of going to experience carnival carnival is a game where like the audience members get to participate in this game like thing and there's always like some sort of prize at the end of the game. Scarlet has his cruel father. He wants to marry her off, so he like arranges a marriage for her, but Scarlet has his dream of going to Carnival. Long story short, she finally gets her wish to attend Carnival. The two sisters go, and when they show up, one of the sisters get kidnapped. Tilla gets kidnapped, and suddenly she becomes part of the game. The goal was to find Tilla. So Scarlet's looking for her own sister, and so is everyone else in the game. And so it's like very whimsical, it's very dreamlike. I love that there are clues I love that there is magic at play and then the whole time it's like are they gonna find the sister? Who's gonna find the sister? And by the way, I forgot to mention that this game is only taking place for five nights So they only have five nights to find the sister and then what what happens after the five nights are over? Will they find the sister? What is gonna happen? This book was really good. I finished this whole book in two days This is a trilogy and I am about to start the second book I think I'm gonna create my TBR soon after I read that book book I read the co-worker I literally just finished reading this book and I'm not gonna lie I don't even know what to say about it because I literally just finished this book like this morning and so my opinion on it isn't very solid yet what am I rating this book what am I gonna rate it Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rate this book a 3.75 stars because of the way that it ended, okay? I loved how I was immediately captured from the very first page. Like, I was like, wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Because let me tell you what it's about, first of all. It's about these two women, Dawn and what's the other girl's name? Natalie, right. Natalie and Dawn both work at this supplemental company called Vix or something like that. And Dawn is the accountant. So Dawn is kind of quirky. She never says the right thing. She's kind of like socially awkward. She has no friends and she's always at her desk like promptly at 8.45 a.m. every morning. And Natalie is like top saleswoman, beautiful. Everybody loves her. She's popular. Like the complete opposite of Dawn, right? One day Dawn doesn't show up to work. Natalie noticed that Dawn wasn't there. Her cubicle is next to Dawn's cubicle. And so so they're always seeing each other so when she showed up and then Dawn wasn't there she was like something happened to her like something is off Dawn's phone starts to ring on her desk Natalie answers the phone and then like it's been creepy ever since Natalie started to feel connected to Dawn like she felt like she had to figure out what happened to Dawn figure out where was she and all this kind of stuff so someone ended up dying and like it's like crazy how this happened and all that is to say without giving any spoilers is that like I didn't really like this book because well I didn't like love the book i did like how i was immediately like wondering like what happened like i was immediately captured by the story in the beginning but then but then you start reading more and more you start realizing that like not everything is how it seems especially according to the synapses i just didn't like the way it ended because i felt like i read all of that just for that like are you kidding me like are you serious something about that i didn't like it wasn't it for me like i really did not like the way it ended i didn't expect it to end like that but at the same time i was like it was very much like lackluster ending in my opinion it wasn't like oh my god like when i finished reading the solid patient my mouth literally dropped to the floor and i was like that like for like so long i was literally like and i still think about that book because that book was very much like <gasps> what the whole time like the whole time this book did not give me that effect at all but that's just my opinion people have been raving about this book but i think that there are better thrillers out there in my opinion so and then the last that we're going to talk about is called you again it's by kate goldbeck a new novel i literally am not even gonna lie to you i dnf this book my bookmark is still in there like i was like over halfway through the book and i was like you know what it's a no i had to constantly 
force myself to read when i have to like make myself read this book to get through it i don't think that that that's enough to put somebody in a reading slump for real this book basically says it's like enemies to friends to lovers situation i'm starting to think like maybe i don't like that kind of trope in the beginning they didn't even seem like enemies it just seemed like what is wrong with you two i don't know how to describe that but it wasn't giving like we hate each other it was just like oh y'all just met in a weird time basically ari is this like freelance struggling comedian she wants to be a comedian and josh is like a chef but he's like a like he's really mean you know and the way that they met was like ari was living with this girl she had a roommate and josh was dating that roommate and then they like all met that kind of way but ari liked the girl and then josh also liked that girl but i'm like but that doesn't make you enemies you know but anyway they're enemies and so ari ends up going through like a really bad breakup and then so did josh so they both end up like single and just like in the worst way then they became friends through their heartbreak apparently but then you know eventually sparks start flying after a while it was, like, it was like this is boring but also I just don't care you know what I mean like it was just such a long story like let me tell you I started reading at page 258 I'm like this book is like 400 and some pages long and I'm like you telling me I have 200 more pages of what I already know like the storyline like like nothing new was happening except just more of the story it was just like very long drawn out story of how like they were enemies and their friends and then lovers but one thing I do I will say is that like I really did love the humor in this book Like it's actually pretty funny because they say some like quirky stuff and like it's very modern They use the language that we use currently like so I love that part about it I love how they talk about Netflix and like I mean it's very much relatable They're literally talking about things that we are currently talking about in, in the real world It's based in New York and all this but I just did not find that this story was that much interesting Like I really had high hopes for this story like I really wanted to love it but I literally was like, I can't keep reading. Like, it's just so, like, I have to force myself to read it. And my TBR is just too good for me to get caught up reading this book, you know? So I had to say, no, you know what, whatever, it's fine. It really is fine. There are other good books. Maybe I'll pick it back up later in the month. But, like, I really don't see myself picking this up again in October. Because my October TBR is lit. Whenever you see the books that I'm reading, you're going to be like, of course you had to start reading this to read that. Because this just is not giving, you know? A lot of people have mixed reviews on this one. Some people love it. Some people People hate it some people are very mid about it I don't hate it but I also don't want to keep reading it and at first I felt bad because I was about to literally sit here and force myself to finish reading it today like I was gonna finish the book today I stopped reading it like two days ago and I was like you know what let me just sit down and read it but then I was like but why if I don't like it just don't read it leave a comment below if you've read that book speaking of leaving comments below leave a comment below if you have read any of these books and give me your thoughts on them what did you think did you love them did you hate them was it very mid what are your views or any of these books five stars in your opinion what do you think i'm very curious i am so excited for october like i'm not gonna lie i am so excited for my october tbr i cannot wait to show you all the books that i have planned to read in october so subscribe so that you don't miss that video and i'll see you in that video next week bye guys